Now the shot 80 has a peculiarity, which is the first shot we actually did in Solaris. So there is a bunch of uh, stuff that is not optimal. In fact, I wouldn't suggest you to do it, but I want to show you why is it wrong. So this is the flipbook we had, and this is the whole scene. So the main problem from this scene is the organization. The organization is just not good at all because we just didn't care about the primitive path at all well this is the the wall this is what you already what you already know so this is the wall that we saved right here it's just uh, the same wall with the band sub this already has the materials and if we merge everything together with the with the camera it looks something like this uh, for the whole way of the houses we used um i think this is the only good part we did which is actually having the scene environment and the houses on the right and the houses on the left so we can control them it's just a simple transform as you can see but have a look at this how unorganized this is starting to become then we have what we did is to import look at this we imported with a sub create so it, yeah not, not good at all this is what we didn't break from the effects Remember, guys, and this is the destruction from the house, which is everything else. And these are all the little parts. And I'm placing them pretty much everywhere on the scene file, which again is not really a good practice. I'm not loading the, the shards because they will explode on my PC. But basically, I the trick is to import them as point instancer. I'm actually going to the out shards which is basically this one. This is after the copy the points. And if you did this as a, as a packed primitive with instancing, which this is the instancing part, as I explained before, you can then call this as a point instancer. This is how it looks from a camera. No render yet. Uh, then it's the usual Titan workflow, the Titan with the render geometry settings set to two and the material, everything is merged together. And finally, but not least, uh, well, finally, uh, from the effects of the main uh, object is the smoke and the ground smoke, where I'm using, again, a GPU volume solution, which is the one we already know is XPU Pyro per view. In the new Houdini 20, this is not a solution anymore because we already have proper shaders. But the idea is the same. It's just a smoke with uh, different densities. Merging everything here. Then we have two different effects, uh, which is which are the big rocks and the small rocks scatter, which is a points instance. In this case, I decided to grab the rocks and with the instancer on the first part, uh, use everything that's boundable, so everything which is a rock, as the as the primitives for these points, which are the points from the rocks, which we did in the effects. Then we, I translated everything a little bit because I didn't like where they were. We added some materials for the rocks, which is just the rest position, which is saved from the rocks with a multiply and a triplanar projection with a texture of a rock. That's all, the only thing it's doing. And I've used this uh, eight material surface material for the uh, shader. And I just didn't use the displacement for the small rocks. As you can see, we have two different things. So in, we are, for the small rocks, we are just using uh, these geometries and for the big rocks, we are actually using the big rocks uh, shader. Everything merged looks like this. We also have a grid for the black bounces at the bottom. And we also have uh, the rest house here, which I believe it's doubled, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this is doubled. We, this shouldn't actually be here unless... I, oh, no. We are, do have this moved. This is moved, so it's actually creating like a shadow in some objects. That is the the whole scene. Yes, it's it just has to create like a shadow on the smokes. 
and then if we go into karma look at this so this is all unorganized this is how you shouldn't be doing this i'm just checking on the memory because this thing tends to explode sometimes so this is without lights and this is with the actual dome light with the arrow lights with the spotlights and a spotlight a distant light and some light linker the light linker look at this since we have everything unorganized look at how messy uh, stuff can start to get in this case we solved it just by deleting everything because initially we had a bunch of light linkings with a bunch of different options because there's nothing organized here but we just decided that the area light 2 doesn't affect the smoke and the distant light doesn't affect the titan so if we were to render everything i'm going to show you this we can have a look at the render passes where we have the albedo, which we ended up not using it. We have the fill, the fill from the left side, the HDRI, the rim light. So this is what we are looking when we are moving the lights. What is going to be affecting how much? These are some glossy reflections which are we are getting for the comper to actually um, have some more detail or control over how rough the Titan looks or not. And and since we have everything unorganized, have a look at this. On the prune, we have to select all of this. The hallway, the wall, the titan, the groom, the grid, etc. Right? So, which is kind of messy. Then we need to hide all the primaries from all these objects. Look at how, how many things we have to write and, and keep in mind. And imagine we have all these render layers. It is a lot. You usually, we just want to uh, hide everything and just... Um, use the background or the background to reveal nothing else uh, here we just had to do look at look at this the pruning all this pruning it is a lot it is a mess and it makes no sense for me to explain because usually you don't you are not going to do this you're going to put everything on their own layer and you're going to call the layer and when, I, when i'm talking about layer i mean um the the hierarchy the structure um the same workflow for the render goes to the beauty of, for example, the foreground. Let's see how it looks. So these are the rocks on the foreground. They do take a lot in memory when they get, as you can see, when they get uh, isolated in camera. You can also do the mid-ground 1 or the mid-ground 2. Let's look at the mid-ground 1 on the beauty. It's initializing. And this is the mid-ground beauty with all the objects, the background. With all the lights so far so good so the same concept applies to, for the other shots where we are dividing the render into into a tech layer where we disable all of this we don't have we don't need that many samples we also prune all the, uh, the lights on everything that we don't actually need and and then just on the output aob we disable the beauty, but we keep all the POC, the depth, the normals, and the cryptos. And the depth for them is just the same. Limits set to zero. And we kept the deep camera just so we can blend this better in compositing. And pretty much all the other layers, the ones we needed, are exactly the same. And the volumes are exactly the same. Remember, guys, when it has to do with volumes let me just turn this off and it has to do with volumes you see how i'm just turning the render visibility off because if i'm going to be rendering the volume i don't want them to have a hold down i usually try to avoid that if i'm using deep if i'm not i need a, a hold up that's the rule of thumb if you are using deep compositing don't use hold down use phantoms and if you are not using deep use holdouts and don't use uh, primaries that's basically the rule of thumb we have going on here